Hey guys, uh, just doing a little bit of an update here. I'm going to get the shaper wired today. Um, I'm going to put some light on the subject here. So I've got uh, the two conduit boxes mounted. And um, basically, let's see if I can. There we go. Got some light on the subject. Um, so these are the the uh, wires coming from the switch on top here and uh, it's a double pole with the ground and um, so anyways uh, I've also got the uh, um, wires coming from the cord here that's coming out of the, out of the uh, back side of the machine and then I've got these here. And I would have had this wired last night, but unfortunately when I picked up the connectors, I picked up a stupid 3.8s and not a half inch uh, uh, connector for this corrugated um, flexible conduit. So anyways, I'm gonna wire it in one direction right now because I still haven't quite figured out the whole reversing uh, toggle switch deal yet. So um, I've got provisions here, so when I wanna do that, that'll be, I can do that. So I'm just gonna put a cover over this here, and when I do get a toggle switch, the toggle switch I'm on the cover, and I'll be able to open this door up, flip the switch whichever way you need to run, and put the door back in and go on and go. So, but, um, yeah, there's the back side of the conduit box of the switch. And I think I did mention earlier that I did find a uh, AB starter, but I won't see that for probably about a week or so. So I want to make sure this thing runs, not that I need to put bearings or something in it because it did sit a while. So um, I just want to get her up and running and uh, test it out. So today um, I'm going to need to get this here fitting and then uh, tie all these uh, wires together. Um, into the motor leads and I sure hope that I uh, marked these leads right going off the motor. It's only four leads but uh, there's a, a T5 and T eight are the ones you use to turn it around. So you gotta have T5 with T1 and T4 with T8 or um, T1 with T8 and T4 with T5. You can't have five and eight together. Five and eight have to be with the opposite two um, wires in this cluster here. So anyways, so I'll get that wired today and uh, hopefully we'll be able to fire them up here pretty soon. So keep it posted. Yeah, oh, and then um, I think I also mentioned last time too, I need to uh, drill and mount the uh, power feed. So um, I've just been delaying on this a little bit. It's been extremely hot here, number one. Number two is uh, I came in the warehouse here this morning where this is sitting, and uh, it's just a tin shed basically, and there's a shitload of wasps and hornets floating around in here. So I use some... Uh, it's generically known as a dairy bomb. It's used to uh, spray dairy barns and milk houses and stuff to kill flies, any flying insect really. Uh, works really good for wasps and hornets because it contains pyrethins and that's something that they don't like. So um, I sprayed a bunch in here about a half hour ago and um, they're still kind of buzzing around a little bit here and there. I keep finding a couple spots where they're hiding so I keep uh, dousing them and takes them a little bit for them to actually come to the ground and, and uh, die. So. Anyways, but it's unbelievable hot in here. So, anyways, um, I'm going to get this um, run of town and grab a, a new connector here. And uh, we'll get this thing uh, wired up. Hey, guys. Uh, got the shaper up and running here. And I've got the uh, power feed mounted, or the drills hold tapped and, and uh, mounted. And uh, just got a, a cutter in here. It's uh, sending us the one I just got from um, a, off eBay. It's a double easing round over. And uh, the only thing is um, that I need to check into is there is a little plate right here that's loose. And when I start that, that'll spin and it'll catch up with the spindle. But you can actually take it out. It looks to be like a dust guard for the um, the actual spindle. So I need to see if there's some type of a locking ring or something or a snap ring that goes on there. I don't really see a groove. But um, anyways, 
Uh, I need to check into that, so hopefully I can find something on the owner's man I downloaded off of VintageMachines.com. Um, but anyways, still need to make a dust shroud yet. And I'm actually going to strip the table down. I'm going to take the uh, fence off, take the power feet off again, and take the uh, orbital sander to this entire surface and polish it up nice. So uh, the only thing I noticed with the power feed is looks to be this cabinet maker had a little boo boo before. You can see it I just went around. There it is. So you must have turned it around. So um, that um, could have happened depending on where you had the power feed mounted before, but uh, mounted on this side. Um, the power feed, if you don't have it tight, the uh, power feed will move into the cutter this way. Um, if you have it mounted over here, the power feed will move away from the cutter. So, um, I'm not, like I said, I'm not sure. Maybe this power feed was on something else at one time. Maybe he swapped them all or whichever. Not sure. But, um, anyways, so uh, it is up and operational here. And I do admit, I probably, the more I really thought about this, uh, it's the only shaper I've got with a three-quarter spindle. The other two have an inch and a quarter. But I put a three-horse on here for a couple reasons. Number one, if I really need to use it for anything else, like say uh, um, from when I first started doing woodworking with some of the raised panel doors I have out, if I ever need to replace one, um, one of the cutters I got is an LRH, but it's a... Uh, it's a nice bevel raised panel, but it's got a really nice radius in the inside corner, and it only runs on a three-quarter spindle. So I guess uh, I could use this as a universal shaper as well, if need be, for doing um, older door styles where I don't uh, have a cutter for an inch and a quarter bore. Um, but otherwise, for what I'm going to do with it for door edge and everything, it probably could have gotten by with a one horse. They were originally sold with a one horse, but... The uh, thing about a one horse repulsion induction single phase motor, it's almost got the horsepower of almost a two. Um, so, or maybe a little over. A repulsion induction, they were very, um, very strong. So, and they were fairly efficient too. So, but there's a lot more moving parts. So, and they were a little bit uh, less simple than today's capacitor start, capacitor run motors. So, but anyways, let's try that again here. Let's see if I can zoom in on that. There we go. So, yeah. Now, this uh, wouldn't necessarily pass the uh, dime and penny test, but it's about as smooth as any Delta shape I've ever known. So. It's definitely not bad, but a lot of it could be coming from the uh, pulley down here. But so, anyways, so I will. Um, I'm done with it for now for the night, anyways. But um, I will uh, set it up, actually get everything aligned, and uh, run a couple pieces through it, make sure that I get a decent, nice, clean cut, it's a little tear out. The one thing I did notice as well is that um, um, this fence here, the casting is, is not true, uh, so they're not parallel. And uh, it actually moves in this a little bit, and actually, I don't think I've ever owned a shaper that actually the two fence halves were parallel with one another, so I've always had a shim, so it looks to be I need to add some um, paper behind here to move it out so that way they're, they're parallel. Another way you can do it is you can actually take the whole fence assembly to the joiner and face and um, face join it or face plane it, but that's um, <laughs> this shaper is going to get set up with two different cutters. so. Um, you know, basically I'll have to ad uh, address it for each cutter, but like I said, it's two cutters, and this particular cutter that's set up with is actually the lesser of the two that I use less often, so. But, anyways, so that is the uh, Delta Rockwell uh, Heavy Duty Shaper, model number three or 43-340.
Thanks for watching.